Welcome to season three of Lake Orion Dragons Varsity Hockey on ONTV. I'm Craig Stockwell, and I'm here with my broadcast partner, Larry Rosen, at Detroit Sports, I'm sorry, Detroit Skating, Skating Club. Club in uh, Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. And uh, Larry, we got a heck of a game to kick off the season. It seems like every year we come out, we kick off the season, and it's... Uh, it's that Howell uh, Warriors team. Yeah, the Howell is a, uh, it's a great matchup. They always seem to play Howell. It's one of the best games of the year uh, early in the season. I love watching the Howell team and the Orient team, and it's great to be back for another season on ONTV. Absolutely, and I think it's the Howell Highlanders now that I think of it. It is the Highlanders. You are right. But either way, uh, uh, you got the green and white going up against the green and gold, and uh, it's going to be a heck of a hockey game. It's usually a physical game when these two teams come together. They're typically uh, skilled teams. Uh, we got a bit of a transition this year with, with Lake Orion. They've, they've, uh, they've got some returning players, but they also have some guys out, or at least one key player out with uh, Drew Casey with uh, uh, ACL. Uh, injured in football, and he's going to be out for the season. Or yeah, he, uh, Drew Casey, one of the football players at Orient, uh, tore his ACL, I think, in the first quarter of the first game of the season. And unfortunately for the Dragons, uh, he's gone for the year, and he was one of the guys they were looking to to uh, lean on to carry some of the scoring load. So they're going to have to pick that up with uh, some of the other guys, Ryan Sidlowski, uh, possibly some of the D-men, Defaw, Greed, pick up some scoring that... Uh, that Casey was going to handle. Absolutely, and the, the Dragons had uh, have had kind of a uh, a bit of a slow start, uh, if you want to put it that way. I mean, they they had a couple of tough games in the, uh, the Novi Invitational, uh, uh, drawing Novi and and uh, Livonia Churchill. They they managed to draw with Churchill um, and uh, didn't fare so well against uh, Novi, and then had a couple of tough losses up uh, up in the. Great White North uh, this past or Thanksgiving weekend with uh, with the Traverse City schools. Yeah, well, I heard that they played well up in Traverse City. Um, got some feedback from one of the dads in the uh, on the uh, Novi tournament that uh, possibly just lack of focus after they fell behind to Novi and it kind of came unraveled. It was a good game to begin with, and a couple goals got disallowed and they came unraveled. And that comes to senior leadership, junior leadership's got a got a. Uh, carry the load for that that type of situation absolutely and i'll tell you uh one of the one of the question marks one of the things that needs to be answered this year is goaltending you know you had a, a senior uh last year logan aldridge uh carrying the load uh in uh, a kid that was a three-year letterman uh so from from your sophomore year to your senior year you get a lot of development time as a goaltender and boy he was solid last year and and led them to a uh, regional championship and, uh, and now uh, Jack Barber, uh, a freshman last year, now a sophomore, second year on varsity. He's, he's developing, he's learning, he's getting hard knocks early, but uh, he's, uh, he's developing with, with every game, with every shot. Well, yeah, and that's what happens. You, you know, you, you come into your own little bit as you get older, you watch a senior for a season, play a few games here and there. And uh, unfortunately for him, he's seen a few pucks early in the year. But uh, that's just going to help in his growth and confidence going forward. Now, how about players to watch, uh, Larry? Who do you see on this Howell, Howell team that's going to give uh, the Dragons some trouble tonight? Well, you know, it's like anything. you got to watch for the goalie, okay? The goalie's always a, uh, you know, one of, one of those guys you've got to keep track of. And uh, Brendan Adams is their leading scorer early in the year. Three goals and four assists, number 21. That's a guy we'll probably watch and probably see him on the power play, on the penalty kill, probably an all-purpose type of player. But as early in the year, we're learning this just like uh, they are, Craig. Absolutely. And how about uh, for the Dragons? The Dragons, you, you, like can, you can you can say it's uh, number 16, Ryan Sidlowski. Um, good player, four-year starter, wearing the C for the Dragons. And like you said, Defaw, big, big defenseman's got to make his presence felt. And as uh, coaches like to say, he, you need... These guys, they need to be hard to play against. Defaw needs to be hard to play against in the D zone. That's one of the keys. Absolutely. I can't uh, disagree with you there. Uh, Sidlowski's a very dynamic player. How about the keys to the game for the Dragons? What are the three things the Dragons have to do tonight to be successful? Well, strong defense, stay out of the penalty box. That's my, one of my favorites. And uh, capitalize 
in your opportunities when you're on the power play in the man advantage. That's Those are my keys. Yours are probably a little bit different because I'm a defenseman's dad and you're a forward's dad, you know? Hey, you know, I like to keep it simple. I always tell my kids, fast, focused, and physical. There you right? go. Three Fs. Wait a second. Yes, F. I F. Physical. I, I know physical starts with a P, <laughs> but it's all about alliteration, Larry. There you go. And you keep these kids thinking. You keep them thinking about positive things and, and things that they can focus on while they're competing in the corners. And, and those are things that I like to look at as a coach. So, um, But, yeah, I agree with your keys to the game. Um, you know, I think hockey's a simple game in a lot of ways. I think people make it complex. Uh, but the ultimate thing is, is being responsible for yourself and for your teammates and, and filling the empty spaces and, and being aggressive uh, when the time calls for it and being safe uh, at, at the appropriate times as well. Now, I totally agree with you there, Craig. The, the being safe part, these guys, you know, a lot of new rules in place is the hits in the head and the, and the head checks and the checking from behind. All those things are enforced at all levels right now. And sportsmanship and, and playing the game properly is very important today. We're about to uh, wrap up the warm-ups here, and we'll, we'll be right back with the uh, puck drop here at Detroit uh, Skating Club. Uh, I'm Craig Stockwell, along with Larry Rosen, and uh, we're looking forward to a uh, rock'em, sock'em game here with the Howell Highlanders. We'll be right back on ONTV. Hello, Lake Orion and Oakland County. This is Sammy Termina here, talking a new show here called OA Now. We're going to talk about sports from football to basketball to volleyball to track and field to soccer, cross country, etc. Here on OA Now on ON TV. ON TV would like to thank our underwriter, Classic Lanes, for their continued support. With 32 lanes, state-of-the-art bowling equipment, banquet facilities, and on-site catering. Classic Lanes is your home for family fun and family entertainment. Classic Lanes is located at 2145 Avon Industrial Drive in Rochester Hills. For more information, visit them on the web at myclassiclanes.com or give them a call at 248-852-9100. Classic Lanes, a proud supporter of ONTV. All right, well, there you go, the uh, Star Spangled Banner there, Larry. There we go. Yep, looking forward to it. As usual, a great rendition that, uh, that Mr. Strauss has on the CD that we get to listen to <laughs> before every game. You can't go wrong with Karen Newman. So, absolutely. So, we got to go through the starting lineups here, Craig. Yeah, absolutely. We're just about wrapping up warm up. So, uh, I think we should go with the starting lineups. Who do you got for uh, the visiting Howell Highlanders? Well, for the Howell Highlanders, I got in net number 35, uh, Mr. Ward Brown. Uh, I got the, uh, uh, let's see, number four defenseman. Thinks that I don't have their positions on my show. Oh, there we go. Uh, I do ha not have their positions on this sheet. Kyle Chapman, number six. Number 15, Colton O'Doherty. Number two, Jacob Kristaniak. Number 20, Tom Weaver. And number 19, Nick Toth. All right. Well, fantastic. Well, and for your Lake Orion Dragons, we have uh, the netminder, uh, number 29, Jack Barker. Um, I think I referred to him as Barber uh, earlier. My apologies uh, to Mr. Barker. Um, certainly remember Jack from last year. He did a fine job as a freshman uh, with, the, with the starts that he had and, and looking to watch him to, uh, continue to improve uh, game by game and, and see how this team develops uh, as the season rolls on. Uh, ben Bach, number six on defense, along with his uh, partner, Nick DePry, number 14. Uh, at center, you have number 22, Connor Mesta. And uh, left wing, uh, the player to look for, uh, Ryan Sidlowski, number 16. And then, uh, of course, at right wing, uh, the big, uh, I, I'd like to call him the punch in the mouth, uh, Andrew DeFaw. There you go. Uh, number 24, I'll tell you what, I, I love the way this kid plays. He plays with energy, he plays physical, he plays fast. And uh, as long as he plays focused, He's a, he's a plus player for the for the Dragons as long as he can uh, uh, play within the, within his means so to speak and stay out of the uh, sin bin. I think uh, I think Andrew's a heck of a player and, and I think he's going to have a big year this year. Well, that goes for any of the kids that are you know the big guys. Referees seem to pick on the big guys, so you have to be that much more cautious of what you're doing and where you are all the time. And uh, you know the other guys not in the starting lineup tonight that we forgot to mention is is uh, returner Jake Chappie, who is. Uh, 
uh, really come along in his game, and, and he's he's a different human being than he was a year ago. I think he's probably grown five inches over the summer, and he's going to be a guy to watch. Absolutely. A third-year letterman as a junior and a uh Third generation chappy, so to speak. No kidding. Yeah, <laughs> it's third generation number ten, I think, isn't it? So there you go. So so we're we're uh, about ready for the puck drop. But uh, hey, it wouldn't be uh, right if I didn't mention the coaching staff. And here we go. Uh, year number five, believe it or not, with the Lake Orion program, and the fourth year with the uh, with leading the uh, varsity program. Uh, you've got uh, head coach uh, Nick Field. Along with his uh, assistants, uh, offensive and forward uh, uh, assistant Mark Dorrington and the defensive uh, uh, coach and assistant coach uh, Aaron Hunt. Well, yep. great, great staff, a lot of hockey knowledge there. Great staff, and our condolences go out and our uh, prayers to uh, Coach Norrington, whose mother passed away a, about a month ago. Um, so we're thinking of him. Absolutely. Uh, great guy, great family. Um, certainly. Uh, uh, thoughts and prayers there, and uh, as we get ready here to, to, to drop the puck, pick off another Lake Orion. Uh, I got to tell you, Craig, season. there's something about the Howell uniforms I just really don't like. <laughs> it might be the uh, not quite white green color that they have as stripes. The, the gold helmet, maybe. The gold helmet with the, I don't know, but here there we go. go. So the Dragons uh, handle the faceoff, and uh, puck kicks up to uh, Connor Mesta, moving with some speed through the neutral zone. Down in the corner looking to set things up. And Hall's happy to kind of back off a little bit there and let him play a little bit. Oh, and there it is. There it is. How about that? My goodness, I'll tell you what. Larry, it looked like the Howell team was sleeping on that play. Yeah, that was a great play. It was kind of a harmless, like you said, Howell's like uh, sitting back on their heels, a little dumping, uh, backhand dumping by a mess in the corner. Defaw picks it up. Sidlowski sneaks out and just puts it in the corner. The goalie wasn't even... Didn't even see what was happening. It happened so fast, yeah, Craig. How about that? You think we scripted that from your uh, lead-in uh, on the players to look for? I'll tell you what. One thing that I missed about uh, Defaw, which I, I should not have, is a heck of a passer. Head-up hockey player. Uh, looks for his options. He got set up below the, the goal there. Found Sidlowski. And, boy, that's about as easy of a goal as uh, Ryan's going to have. Yeah. It's a, maybe we can get a couple more just like it. We call that a slam dunk. So there you go, the Dragons up uh, early, 1-0, and uh, uh, Howell tries to break out of the zone, number 13 up to their captain, uh, number 24, big kid looking for his options as he circles the net. Back in the corner, Bach is uh, trying to battle for the puck, the pry kicks it up the boards, and it's going to come out of the zone. Howell's going to dump it back in and uh, change up lines. Here come the Dragons, the pry sets up. Got some speed. Oh, he fans on the pass, but gets it over to Bach. Bach with a pass up the middle, up to number 19. Uh, kicks it ahead to, you know, they're battling for the puck. Now it's kind of bouncing around a bit. Gronowski with the puck, kicks it around for Grebe. Right now we got Chappie Kirchner, uh, Grebe on the ice. 19 is Bridger Stevenson. Bridger Stevenson. I think he's a. I think he's a new kid. I think he's a new player. Just moved to town from uh, uh, Washington State. I think. Okay. Not sure what year he is. I don't have the. Uh, I don't have the class information on the sheet here. You got Kirchner with the puck now, drawing to driving to the net and gets a nice quick, nice quick shot off, but just misses wide. Grieve keeps the puck in the zone. Kirshner goes after it. Steps into number 19. The puck swings around. Number eight with Hall or for Hall with the puck. Moves through the neutral zone. And here come the Dragons again on a turnover. Number 27 kicks it ahead to 20. And boy, I got some new names here. Yeah, we do. I, I almost said uh, number 27, Kurt Latshaw. <laughs> but that was about three years ago. Yeah, exactly. 20 is Tommy Weaver. And I don't see a 27 on here. We'll get that in the uh, we'll get that in the intermission to find out who number 27 is. Oh, well. <laughs> there you go. Well, 
Here we go. We got a howl breaking out, number 13, ahead to their captain, number 24, Nick Pratt. Young Nile and the, uh, the freshman just clears his own for the Dragons here, Craig. All right, number 20 is uh, Stephen Oberheim. And 27 is Matt Blake. I think I can remember that. And Barker steers aside. His, uh, I think that was the first shot on goal. I think so. I think I better keep track of that. That's my job. We'll give them uh, credit for that. And here comes uh, Howell in, 21 all alone, and another save. Nice kick save by uh, the young uh, Barker. Uh, up ahead now, Mesta with some speed. Cuts through, he's, he's bothered on the puck and uh, kicks it ahead to Sidlowski. Between the legs pass, DeFall with a quick shot and a nice save by the Howell goaltender. Nice pass by Sidlowski out of the corner. Backhand blind pass, newer as, uh, newer as Forder was, and a very nice pass by Sidlowski. Dragons look to regroup. I think the, the Dragons are showing they, they might just have a little bit more um, skill uh, than, the, uh, than the Howell team. I think uh, one of the question marks will be as this game progresses, how does that energy level continue, and, and who's gonna who's gonna want it more? Yeah, Howe has a nice forecheck though, Craig. They do have a couple guys with some wheels out there. Um, number 17's been moving pretty good. I like watch, watching his game so far tonight. Absolutely. Can be a little deceiving on this big sheet of ice here in Rink C. Sidlowski kicks it out to the neutral zone, and Howe's gonna regroup, dump, and change. Here comes Greed, kicks it up the, the boards and uh, picked off by Hall. Centering pass uh, gets right through. Sidlowski kicks it out of the zone. And the uh, the number one line here for the Dragons spending some time in the D zone, Larry. Yeah, they're just kind of, it's had a couple harmless clears, just get out of the zone to the neutral zone and Hall brings it right back in. Puck possession has been a problem on this uh, this shift for the number one line for the Dragons. Well, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm all about smart hockey, but I think there's times where you got a little bit of time and space. You got to take that extra step and uh, find the best option. Absolutely. Hey, what a fine catch by Coach Field on that clear by Sidlowski. One handed grab on the puck. You don't see that every day. Beauty. Well, that's being alert. <laughs> Better than taking one off the, off the uh, chicklets there. We got the Kirchner line out now with Chappie and uh, Bach. And Gronowski on the back end. Uh, Stevenson up there with uh, with uh, Kirshner and yep. Chappie. Icing call on Howell here. And yeah, nice, nice, nice mixture of size and speed here with the uh, the number two line with the Dragons. Uh, you know, you got some you got some skill there, some finishing ability. Uh, Jake Chappie's got some some really nice hands. He can he can finish. And Kirchner's always good around out. the net, Craig. Absolutely. Good energy guy. Works hard on both ends of the ice. The pry kicks it up to the middle. Now Tell it's over to his partner Bach. Yeah, I think your time and space comment is is uh, should be well taken here because the Dragons are just clearing aimlessly, We're not even looking to see what uh, to see where to send the puck, Craig. Yeah, I like to I like to you know kind of hockey's a speed game, right? You you kind of as a player, I think you. You get a sense for how much time you have. And you got a little play developing here. Kirshner tries to center it a couple of times. Works it through to Stevenson. Stevenson tries to center on a backhand over to Kirshner. Backhand shot just wider than that. Yeah, it looks like Stevenson just yeah. got away with a high stick on that play too. Uh, Fisher was right there and thought about calling it, but uh, thought better of it. And uh, Stevenson got away with one there, Craig. Absolutely, and how uh, the best answer they had was to ice the puck. We have an offensive zone uh, face-off here for the Dragons, and uh, Coach Field brings out uh, the, uh, the third line here, uh, number 27, uh, Matt Blake, centering. Uh, oh, and he got a quick shot. Just steered aside by the Howell goaltender. And number 25. Kevin Pramuka. Yep, new 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 player this year. I think oh, he's a. Yeah, they finally brought old number 25 out of retirement, Craig. And number four is one we should remember. Uh, that's uh, it's Mark Nyland's younger brother. Um, I think it's Kurt, right? Yeah, Kurt Nyland. Yep, and he's built like his brother, tall, lanky. 
Uh, look a lot alike out there on the ice. They got him listed as a D-man, but they got him playing up on the on a wing there. And uh, Bach now is going to try to cycle back. Number six had some speed with the uh, Highlanders. And uh, they battle for the puck in the corner. Howell comes out with it. <laughs> Bach doesn't give up, though. He's, he's fighting along there. And uh, number 27, uh, Matt Blake helps him out. Kicks it ahead to neutral ice and tips it into the corner. No icing here. Sidlowski now with the uh, first line out with the claw. And Nesta steps in right out in front. Oh, and what a save. Two shots the there. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent saves. <laughs> nice little centering pass by uh, Nesta to Defaw. Uh, he gets a little quick, uh, quick shot that gets turned aside, and uh, Nesta follows it up with a rebound. And the goaltender was equal to the task. Yeah, and it was kind of ironic because uh, Defoe went for the big hit behind the net and missed it, and it still uh, materialized into a nice little scoring chance there. An right, offensive zone faceoff for the Dragons. You got Mesta, Sidlowski, and Defoe, and uh, somehow Howell controls that faceoff, and they break out to the neutral zone. Looked like a high stick. And it was a high there stick, and it. The official on the opposite side of the ice called the high stick. The one closest to the play was uh, and oblivious to the whole situation. I, you know, it's kind of funny because it looked to me like uh, the Howell teammate played the puck. They did not blow the high stick, and then the kid that uh, actually took the high stick played it, and they did blow it down. Yeah, I think it was the uh, far ice officials waiting for the close ice official to make the original call. Number 13 throwing it just wider than that. 24 for Howell tries the centering pass. Kicked ahead, and here comes Defaw. They The Dragons uh, got a three on three, but Mesta had some speed and a high shot. I'm not sure if the goaltender got a part of that or if that just uh, sailed on. Yeah, I think that was just an error mail by number 22, Mesta. I think he liked to have that opportunity back, Craig. Yeah, I think he was looking stick side, short side there in the high corner, and he just kind of missed it. So we're back to the Chappie Kirchner line with uh, Stevenson on the wing there on the on the left wing, I think, Craig. Well, I think when you when you look at a hockey team, you know, where you always look at you always look at how all the pieces kind of fit together, right? So. You look at the you look at the number one line for the Dragons, and, and to be honest with you, you look at the top two lines, and you wonder, boy, what does this look like with Drew Casey in there, right? Oh yeah, you can so, only you can only wonder. Uh, obviously, you can't you can't play that game, but with what they have, and and Chappie makes a, a shot just wide of the net. Um, with what they have, it looks like they can create some offense here, and it's just going to be a matter of what are they going to get out of the second line. Right, and the second line's got some talent. They got some scoring on this line with uh, Chappie and Kirchner. Absolutely, you got some scoring, you got some grit, you got some physical play and some speed, uh, determination. I mean, you add those things up and you should you should probably see some production and some success. You'd think, I, I, you, I think you're gonna see it. It might be a little, take a little longer than the, than the Dragons coaching staff would like, but I think you're gonna see it. I think you're gonna see Chappie have a really big year for the Dragons. And Kirchner get back to what he did the first year he played. He was a goal machine for weeks, for three weeks in a row. Absolutely. Now Blake uh, throws it in deep for the Dragons, and here comes uh, Powell on a breakout, number 17 driving the net. And uh, 26, defenseman for uh, the Dragons. Uh, little rainy. Nice little body check. Yeah, nice body right check, too. That's uh, also you just a nice check by number 27 of the Dragons as well. Throwing the body around pretty good here late in the first period. That's centerman uh, Matt Blake. And I got to tell you, I'm going to have to uh, do a little more research here, and I'll have the, uh, the classes. I'm not sure what year these guys are. Um, got some new players here that look like uh, look like the Dragons going to have something to build on. Yeah, when you know we didn't get our rosters in the name normal fashion that we get them prior to the game. Um, the print's a little smaller, and they're not labeled the way they are used. We're used to seeing. We have to get on Coach Field and his secretary and his staff on that. Yeah, hey, I'm just happy we're not playing Stony Creek where they don't have any vowels in their name, <laughs> <laughs> except the one on the end. <laughs> and that's silent. <laughs> <laughs> Number 
seven, uh, Greed throws it in deep. I'll tell you, um, Jason Greed uh, is one of those players that, you know, watching him as a JV player, and here comes uh, Howell. 15 steps in. Nice and a save. Fine by save. Jack Bartlett. How about that glove save, Larry? <laughs> that was one that was the best save of the night so far. Both goalies have made a couple fine saves, but uh, Barker flashing some leather there. Uh, we get that goaltending all year. It'll be a it'll be a great year for the Dragons. That was a heck of a wrist shot there, but what I was saying about Greve is, you know, I watched this kid develop over uh, his high school career now, and I think he's I don't know if he's a junior or a senior. I think, I think he's, he's a junior. I think he uh, I think he's a junior. Well, maybe he's a junior. I'll have to double check that. But I, either way, um, what incredible improvement and in, in what I think uh, makes him so valuable on the back end is his decision-making ability. He just makes great decisions with the puck, moves the puck well, finds the open guy. I mean, you need guys like that on the back end. Yep, and I, I did in his last shift, I noticed he's skating much better, much much more fluid, and is is pretty darn fast. I think his speed's improved as well. Absolutely. And, you know, confidence. You can't measure it, right? And no, it absolutely just, not. It absolutely changes a player. Another icing by the Howell Highlanders. That's, I think, their fourth uh, bailout icing here to just get out of trouble. We've kind of seen a little bit of neutral zone play, a couple nice scoring chances so far tonight, but uh, the one goal by the Dragons early and a scoring chance or two for each team. But other than that, it's kind of been... Uh, an uneventful first period with 5.59 left. Absolutely. Now you get the Kirshner, Chappie, Stevenson line. Stevenson's going to hold this puck in. Down in for Chappie, and he tries a tries a feed. He, he, he knew Kirshner was there. He kind of went with a blind pass there. got picked off. But uh, not not a horrible play. I mean, he, 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 knew, he knew where his guy was, tried to feed it out to the middle. And we got a penalty coming up here on the Islanders. I think we're going to get a... Uh, I think we're going to get a boarding possibly. Uh, I don't think it'll be a check from behind, but I think it'll be a boarding call. Um, two minutes to number 13 for the Highlanders, I think. Yeah, when you're that big, you'll never get a two and a ten. <laughs> two minutes to <laughs> Hunter Herzl, number 13. I think we got, uh, I, oh, he's going to get a, is that a cross check, Craig? I think it was a cross check. Um, don't know if I'd agree with the call, but uh, the, yeah, As we always foot. say, we'll take it. All five foot. All five foot one of them is in the box. But uh, He put the four check on the Dragons and uh, just got uh, hung up with the Dragon player facing the boards. Don't think there was any uh, malicious intent there. I can only assume this is the number one power play. You know, you got Kirshner with uh, Sidlowski and Defaw. I think I know where Defaw is going. Probably right in front of that. Yeah, it's a pretty good possibility there. And there he goes. Nice play by Mesta on the point. Quick shot. Mm. Sidlowski with his second goal of the game. Ooh, he just, How about that call? Yeah, he the just, guy to look out for. <laughs> yeah, he just airmailed it right over the shoulder of the goaltender for the Highlanders. And just like you said, Craig, at the beginning, you know where Defaw's going right in front of the net, that big body. Uh, block division, the goalie. The goalie never saw the puck till it was coming out off the off the high twine of the netting. I got to tell you, that was a great shot, absolutely. But if I'm a dragon, my mouth is absolutely frothing right now because <laughs> I just want to shoot the puck. I mean, my <laughs> lord. They just need shots on net, and they're going to put the puck in the net tonight. Yep, so here we There's go, no two nothing. Two goals, one uh, in the first 15 seconds of the game, and the second goal in the first 15 seconds of the uh, first power play of the game. And sorry, I didn't say up front with all due respect, but I'll say it now with all due respect to the goaltender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that he even saw the puck, Craig. Uh, even had he seen it, would he have stopped it? We don't know, but it was a pretty darn nice play. Kirshner in. Quick shot, shoulder save by number 35. Kirshner's got the puck again, and... Uh, didn't really have anyone to go to. He kind of skated into where Chappie was, and they really didn't create any kind of separation there. Stevenson stepping up, but uh, Howell's able to break out. Here comes one of their captains over to number 17. Trouble handling the puck. Kicks it back, blind pass. Here it comes out for the Dragons. Turning gun up the boards hardly ever works, though. But here comes Grieve, and he's got some space. He's going to use his speed. Kicks it ahead to 
Champion right back to Grebe. And boy, I'll tell you, if that's ahead of him just a little bit, you got a heck of a play right yeah, there. Yeah, it was a really nice play also by Chappie to stay on sides and a, and a fine save by Mr. Barker again. Absolutely, and I'll tell you what, quick shot. Nice save by Barker. The uh, Howell guy took, took some liberties with a little extra when the goalie had the puck. And uh, Mr. Grono, uh, Gronowski, Mark, or is it Mark Gronowski? I think it's Mark, yeah. No, Matt, Matt Gronowski, I'm sorry. Uh, Matt Gronowski lets him know about it. And uh, of course the ref's not gonna call that because you know, you gotta take care of your front of your net. So it was a, and uh, Dragons were caught on a little bit of a change which caused that scoring chance. Defenseman was just coming off the bench. which is what uh, generated that scoring chance for the Highlanders. Absolutely, and I'll tell you, it, it appears to me the Dragons have a, a distinct speed advantage here against this Howell team. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, Larry, after all the controversy a few years back with the Howell program, they just haven't been the same. No, ab I, absolutely not. This used to be this used to be a top 10 program in D1 every year. Yeah, it was a powerhouse. And a lot of that had to do with uh, one of the one of the coaches, you know, having a lot of experience and uh, knowing how to knowing how to get the best out of their kids, and and with they had some turmoil and some things that happened, and the whole staff flipped over, and players left, went to travel, and did some other things, and it hasn't been the same. You're you're uh, you're 100 correct there. Here comes uh, Dragons trying to break out through the middle. Nylon can't handle the pass from Sadowski. Kicks it in against the wall and he's going to step in at number 24. Good physical play. And the Dragons are able to clear. It looks like an icing. We're going to come back for a defensive zone uh, faceoff. Before that, we'll take care of some business. DVD copies can be purchased by calling ON TV at 248-693-3377 or 248-393-1060 for only $10. You can get a copy of not only this game, but any game or program in our broadcast wall. That's DVD copies, 248-693-3377. And here we are, live action. Uh, face off, looked like the Dragons were gonna break out, but uh, the puck turned over in the neutral zone, and here come uh, the Highlanders. Number 20, defenseman holds it into the zone, kicks it in deep. Janowski comes out with it. He's gonna step through the middle. Nice little, nifty little, uh, play and he looks like he's going to draw a penalty. Yeah, number 21, our player to watch for the game, Brendan Adams. I, I'm not sure Coach Field would agree with the uh, the direction that Kronowski carried the puck right in front of his own net with two Highlanders right on him, but <laughs> end result is uh, he kept the puck on his stick and got hauled down in a neutral zone for another Dragon power play. And I got to tell you, ladies, just look at the Howell player just got so frustrated because he couldn't believe he didn't take the puck away from him that he just reached his stick out and, and, and hauled him down. Kirshner now with the puck in the corner. Got a 2-0 Lake Orion lead, uh, 226 left in the first period. Dragons on a power play. Nice little redirection uh, out front. They call a high stick. And it was a high stick, and of course the close official thought he saw it but wasn't sure, and the far official about 70 feet away made the call. Well, I thought that uh, redirection was more like waist level, but uh, I guess that was higher than that, eh? I guess when they show it back on replay, we'll, we'll know. But that's uh, the next broadcast will be replay. <laughs> Pretty sure our producer's working on that for us. By then, we'll have all the bugs worked out of our broadcast. We'll know what year our players are. And they weren't sure what they were going to get from us, Larry, tonight uh, after, you know, almost a year's layoff. Seven months seven off. Seven months off, exactly. So we'll regroup here by uh, Kirchner. Other than learning some names, I think we got it going on though, there, brother. Yeah, I think we're doing okay. <laughs> you know, I've had some. You know, I'm thinking that uh, ten dollars for a DVD probably is a pretty darn good deal. Yeah, I'm not sure how much of that we get. Buck for me, buck for you, or what? You know what? It's a <laughs> <laughs> and if that's the case, we'd be overpaid. <laughs> Absolutely. I think we had a dragon in the crease on that play, which caused the faceoff to come outside the zone, Craig. 118 left on the power play, 150 left in the period. Period number one of our first broadcast, 2014-15 Dragon season. All right, well, the dragon's on the power play, and they look uh, semi-interested. Uh, Mesta with the puck behind the net. Cycles around, kicking up a little speed. 
over to uh, Kirshner, kicks it wide to Sidlowski. He's going to cycle back, but thinks better of it, throws it in the corner. Stevenson battling for the puck down low with number 20 with uh, Howell. Gets a little help from Kirshner. He's going to walk away with it, but uh, 20 recovers nicely. And now Kirshner, with a little help from Sidlowski, comes out, kicks it back to Nesta. Nesta's looking for his options. Over to Sidlowski. Could it be the trick in the first period? That's what we want to see. Quick shot by Mesta. Just a little bit wider than that. Just a little outside. He's going to take a look again. Another quick shot. And here he is. Oh, there he oh, is. in the dragon the score. Rebound, number 19. There we go. Um, Stevenson. Yep, number 19, Stevenson. Been a nice setup. A... Uh, Bridger Stevenson, I'm sorry, I should remember that name. We had a shot by Mesta, saved by the goalie. Rebound came right back to Sidlowski for the one-time slap shot. Another nice save by the goaltender. And number 19, Stevenson, is it? Yeah. Uh, knocked yeah, the puck, Stevenson. knocked the third rebound in in a sequence oh, to wow. give the Dragons a 3-0 lead with 55.6 seconds left in the first period. So the captain, Sidlowski, you got, you got two goals and an assist, uh, three points in the first period, 3-0 Dragons lead. And, uh, boy, this is a heck of a way to start off our broadcasting season going into the holidays here in the, the league schedule for the Dragons. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been pretty pretty good to watch. And like I said, and uh, I think I'm two for two on the keys to the game here, Craig, uh, as far as uh, Sidlowski is a player to watch and uh, capitalize on the power play. I, You know, I hate to admit when you're right, Larry, so... Well, I, usually, I usually root against your guy when you pick him, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, it doesn't happen often, so I gotta, I gotta beg for my kudos when I can. I figured, I figured you had it right tonight for sure. So yeah, that looks like a high stick. I'm gonna go ahead and call that one. Yep, I and I, as a matter of fact, both officials called that one. 12.73 seconds left in the first period. Face off deep in the dragon zone. With uh, the number two line on the ice. See, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pick on uh, Matt Gronowski on that play, but I really do not understand why so many players will reach up over their head to play a puck when they can uh, grab it with their hand, drop it to the yeah, ice, and put it on their stick. Let it go in a corner, go get it. Right? I mean, I just, I, I don't understand that play. And it's not, it's not one player. I mean, they, a lot of these guys will do that, and I know it's reaction, whatever. You got hand eye, and you, you just try to make a play, but. And if it's up above your head, if it's over your shoulders, you got to let that go. I agree with you. Well, here we go. The end of the first period, uh, Larry. What a what a start for the Dragons. Three nothing lead. A couple of power play goals, I believe. Yep, two power play uh, goals. One by Sidlowski and uh, one by Stevenson. Uh, goal on a first shift of the game on a nice little nifty play by uh, Mr. DeFaw from the corner of the net. Everybody involved in that play. Um, great start. Yeah, it was a great start. And like I said, it's always a good start at home when you come home. You got your home fans, and you score in the first 15 seconds of the of the uh, match here. It's uh, it's been fun to watch so far, and we got shots on goal. I have five for the Howell Highlanders and two quality saves by the uh, Dragon goaltender. And I got uh, 12 shots for the Dragons, three of them hitting the back of the net. That certainly plays to, to form in the way that we saw this game with the eye test. So, but hey, we're, uh, we're just, we just wrapped up the first period. Uh, the Zamboni's on the ice, and as they clear the ice, we're gonna take a little bit of a break. But uh, before that, uh, uh, have you ever wanted to make your own TV show or operate a camera for a live sporting event? Well, ONTV can make it happen. Your first step, though, is to sign up for orientation. It's free and offers you a look behind the scenes of ONTV. Call 248-693-3377 or 248-393-1060 for more information. I'm Craig Stockwell along with Larry Rosen. Uh, we're going to take a break here uh, between inter uh, the first intermission. We'll be right back with second period action with Lake Orion Dragons Hockey right here on ONTV. Hello, I'm Joanne Van Tassel, here on behalf of the Lake Orion Lions Club to let you know that again this year, the Lions Club will be doing Christmas baskets of food and gifts for families in need here in the Orion area. This year, there are donation boxes at a number of locations, and those locations are shown on your screen. We'd appreciate 
whatever help you could provide in assisting the Lake Orion Lions Club in providing much needed food for needy folks here in our community. After the first intermission, the Dragons are feeling pretty good about themselves. 3-0 lead over the uh, Howell Islanders. And, well, I'll tell you, Howell coming into this game 2-2. Two and two, The Dragons at 0-3-1 after a, a tough start, playing some tough teams uh, early in the season. Uh, who would have saw this coming? Uh, thought, thought the Dragons would have their hands full tonight. Well, you never know it, you know. Every day is a new day, and uh, the Dragons have a good club. They just got to start gelling. They had, a, like you said, a tough early start, and uh, hopefully they just continue uh, the way the game's going so far. Absolutely. Well, here we go. We're about to line it up for uh, the faceoff or to start second period action. We got the uh, Nesta, Sidlowski, and uh, the ball line, uh, along with uh, Bach and DePry on the back end. And uh, Mr. Jack Barker in between the pipes. And here we go. The Dragons kind of win the puck forward, but uh, can't control it. Howell takes the puck, kicks it in. And they're, they're on the offense. Oh, and there's a quick shot. Oh, and a great oh, save. A kick save by Jack Barker right to the corner. How about that? Yeah, that was an excellent save by Barker. I'm not sure he saw that puck until the very last minute, Craig. It was a great save. He kicked it off the right pad into the corner. That shot had to sound like an alarm clock. It just about woke him up. <laughs> he hasn't seen a whole lot of action. Nah, he's only seen, uh, he, I, I have five shots. I think the official score has seven. We're going to go with me on that one. Fry has a little room. He's going to kick it ahead to Sidlowski. Always a good choice. Over to DeFaw. He turns around, gets smoked from behind. And Here uh, comes uh, Holly. 24 has got some space. He comes in, and he runs the goaltender. He does get a shot off, though. No penalty on the plague. Puck, cups, puck comes off the magnets, moorings, pegs, whatever we want to call them these days. He gets a little pat on the head by the goaltender. Says, uh, hey, it's okay. You'll learn to stop someday. <laughs> 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 oh, there is a penalty on the play. Looks like we're probably going to get number 27 for a trip. I, I got to tell you, Craig, I didn't see it. That, that's 21. Number that's 21? Matt Gronowski. Matt Gronowski on the trip. But... Uh, Let's see, uh, I'm sorry. That's his 17th and 18th penalty minute of the season. <laughs> well, I guess he did deserve it then, huh? <laughs> and Chappie tries to clear, but it's held in by 23. Nice play by the defenseman. Down into the corner for 21. He's looking around, tries the uh, cross ice pass. Nice little pass. 23's got it now. Elects to pass. Oh, and he tries. Well, I'll tell you, that it was good puck movement, but maybe one pass too many. I would agree with you. And like you said, Craig, on your on one of your comments, uh, time and space, Chappie had had an opportunity to clear the puck there, didn't realize he had as much time and space as he did. And since that point, the Highlanders have had the puck the whole time. Absolutely. What's kind of funny is you can, spend, you can spend 10 years trying to teach a kid how to pass, and then uh, the next 10 years you've got to teach him when not to. <laughs> Because sometimes the shot's the right choice, right? I would agree with you. But you know what they say, a point is a point, and a pass is the same number of points as a goal. Absolutely. Nice now pressuring the puck. Boy, a whole lot on the edges, not a whole lot in the middle for Hall. 24 with the puck. Got a little space. He's holding it, kicks it around, cycles it back to 21, looking to the front. Can't get it through. Up to 16, and uh, he's going to pass it back, but that's going to clear the zone. Here comes Mesta with some spade. Oh, and I'll tell you, he just about got that puck away from 23, and he would have been gone. Yeah, he uh, made a nice play poking the puck free and went after it himself, almost made the play. Well, I haven't – I don't have a lot to complain about in this game, but I'll tell you, I, I'd like to see the replay on that uh, penalty because I didn't see it. Well, I think when the uh, when the guy's elm free and he falls down into the goalie, it's a it's a it's a tripping no matter what. <laughs> now an icing. Yeah, Sidlowski clears the puck the length of the ice, um, just as Mr. Gronowski steps out of the sin bin. Yep, and it was a, it was not a bad power play by the Hounders. They uh, 
They logged four shots on goal on that power play, Craig, but couldn't cash in. A couple nice saves by the goalie. Absolutely. There you go, defensive zone faceoff. Always critical here for the Dragons. Kirshner wins it ahead. Here comes uh, Chappie. He's got some room. He got a quasi. Oh, and he, oh, hit, and he the hit the post. How about that? Like I said, sometimes any shot's a good shot, right? <laughs> I mean, that was a that was a heck of a shot, goal scorer shot. And boy, he he just missed by an inch to the left, and that thing's in the net. Yep, he sure did. And it wasn't a hard shot. It no. was just a just a it was just an accurate shot in the right place. Like you said, one inch, half inch. Yep. It's in the net to make it four nothing. But uh, and of course, Howell's forced to ice the puck after that scoring opportunity by Chappie. Yeah, that's a goal scorer shot. I mean, you, you see a kid with a quick release like that, you keep the shot low. Yeah, it's really tough for a goaltender when you got guys that can shoot the puck like that and stride. Here come the Highlanders and uh, it's going to kick back to Greed. 15 holds it in for Howell. Oh boy, in on the goaltender, a save, another save. Puck's loose, back into the corner and here comes Stevenson with the, for the Dragons. He carries it out to neutral ice. He's going to throw it in deep. Good play to get it in deep. Here comes Chappie trying to hold it in. He gets a piece of it, but goes down. And on a trip. He got tripped uh, going on the forecheck. Nice forecheck by Chappie on a dump in by Grebe. The old dump and chase uh, seems to work, and the Dragons are going back on the power play. 13-10 on the clock in period number two here, Craig. Yeah, absolutely. And another head down slow skate to the penalty box for a high high runner. If uh, if uh, actions and mannerisms could speak, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Doc steps into the Powell player, and here comes uh, Sadlowski with the puck ahead to the fall. He's got some room. Good play to kick it ahead to uh, Kirchner. Kirchner has it. The Powell player loses his stick, goes to retrieve it. Looks like a bit of a hook by number 20, but uh, I don't think they're going to call anything on Hall right now unless they draw blood. Quick shot by uh, Mesta, and I'll tell you, that, that's another one that if that gets through, that's trouble. Yeah, blocked by the defenseman or hit a defenseman uh, inadvertently there. Here's Sidlowski with the puck. Steps in, quick shot. Two shots there. Goaltender. Good save by the goalie. It looked like it hit him in the shoulder, and... Uh, Nice rebound control, gets on it, uh, gets on it pretty quickly. And uh, Coach Field's going to use this whistle as an opportunity to get his uh, second uh, power play unit some, uh, some good quality time here. Yep, and you can see the unhappiness of the first power play unit. They wanted to stay out there for another opportunity. Oh, the shot gets blocked as uh, DePry tries to throw it to the net. Good, good thought, just didn't get through uh, as the Howell player steps in front of it. And Chappie can't handle it. And back uh, through the middle comes 24 for Hall. Quick shot, sails it high and uh, outside the zone. Outside uh, face off here, outside the blue line. Yep, 47 so, seconds here, Craig, on the power play. Well, that's a that's a that's a pretty bad miss on that shot. <laughs> My <laughs> lord, that didn't get tipped. No, that was a bad miss. Holy free holies. He was going for the upper reaches of the net on that play. That's straight up air now. Fry kind of misplays it with a with a glove, but he's able to recover. Kicks it ahead, and uh, boy, it just gets tipped away from uh, Stevenson. And the goaltender for Hall is going to cover that up. So I'll take the offensive zone face off. Yep, there. and uh, number one power play unit's going to get another crack at it with 34 seconds left on the power play. Penalty to number six of Howell, Kyle Chapman. Got a question for you, Larry. At what point? And I'm not suggesting that we're at that point yet at 3 nothing early in the second period, but at what point do you start looking at, uh, you know, getting some other guys a, a look on the, on the power play? I mean, you, you know your personnel, you know the guys you want to have out there, you know what you're working toward, right? I mean, you got a long season, you're, you're, uh, you're trying to get uh, some consistency and so on and so forth. Just wondering what your thoughts are. Well, uh, my thoughts are, you know, it's, you know, in, in this game where it's competitive, um, 
these power plays and penalty kills are always a work in progress. And, uh, you know, it would be nice in a big, big lead, you know, for five, you know, five or six goals to get some of those other guys' looks. But I don't think you're going to see it any time sooner than that because the power play is always a work in progress and they need to be successful in those tight games. So every chance they get to practice, they have to, the coach is going to have to have them take advantage of that. Absolutely. Well, it's six, six game of the season. You really don't know what you have yet. You, you're patching some holes. You got some guys out with injuries. You got uh, you got Brisky out. Who I apologize, I kind of forgot about. Uh, I forgot we had another Brisky. Uh, Jake's uh, Jake's younger brother, uh, Matt. Is it Matt Brisky? What's his number? No, it's Joe. Joe Brisky, number eleven. And. Um, so we got we got uh, a couple of key players out. I know uh, having seen Joe play uh, last fall, uh, pretty skilled player, pretty physical, uh, as a, as you might expect from a brisky. Yeah, I would. I was just gonna say, there's uh, probably no doubt that he is uh, physical. Absolutely. And then of course Drew Casey. I mean, uh, what are you gonna say? He's literally the probably the. I mean, all around skill wise, he might be the most skilled player on the team. He's certainly at least one of the top two. Uh, with Mr. Sidlowski, and uh, maybe even uh, you want to throw uh, Mesta in there as number three, but but in either event, um, you, you got some key pieces that are out. So what do you got? You well, gotta right. Figure it out, right? Yeah, you gotta you gotta work with your uh, you gotta figure out your your line combinations, do some tweaking, move some guys around, see who gels with whom, and uh, that's gonna take a few games, Craig. I think Coach Fields figuring that out here tonight. He may get to play a. Uh, few uh, games and move some guys around if the Dragons put a couple more uh, pucks in the back of the net. Absolutely. The number 12 is a captain, and I'll tell you, just looking at him, I'm, I'm convinced he's a freshman. <laughs> <laughs> is that size or? Uh... This, this comes from a, a vertically challenged man <laughs> with a vertically challenged family. <laughs> but you've done well with it, Craig, I yeah, might absolutely. add. As have your young, as have your uh, your young lads. A big things come in small packages. Two more nice Here's saves here. To fall with the puck through the neutral zone as Mesta kicks it ahead. Oh, and he, he tries to pass the sound but can't quite get it through. And now he's going to come off as he loses his stick. Nice play by uh, Barker, the goaltender. Oh my goodness! Uh, I'll tell you, Larry. <laughs> I got to tell you, Craig. I don't like to call, but it's a penalty. That's just not a trick, dude. The kid goes freaking Bobby Orr over top of a stick, <laughs> and you call that a trick. Well, My Craig, Lord. I got to tell you. Is he going to be on the cover of the Detroit News? You are definitely tilted green and white there, my man. My goodness. <laughs> you know, it may I'm not. I'm not even sure the stick made contact with any part of his body. You know, it was a pretty emphatic call by the referee, and I am never a guy to question a referee's judgment. Uh, no, of course Especially not. in the game of hockey. Well, of course not, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I love this song, man. It's like my theme song. Here it is. <laughs> and the Dragons win the draw. Back to the pry, and he's going to clear it the length of the ice. Nice play by the defenseman. Yeah, and that comes down to a clean face-off win by Kirchner. It's you do, so critical. Especially on the penalty kill. Absolutely. We got an icing here by the uh, Howell Highlanders. They went for the stretch pass, and it uh, stretched a little too far, and uh, we got an icing face-off in the Highlander zone. Dragons up 3 nothing. 8.50 left in the second period. I got to tell you, I was having some flashbacks there, Larry, <laughs> the whole stretch pass icing play. Let's not talk about the stretch pass play. I actually was getting some. We have a shorthanded goal by Chappie. It was an unbelievable play. Craig, I don't know what uh, clean faceoff win by Kirchner again. Chappie puts the puck in the net. Bang, bang, just like that for nothing. One timer. I was busy entertaining myself. I missed that one. You were. Apologies, uh, Jake. Uh, nice goal. <laughs> 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 well, I got to tell you, and it's right back to what we just talked about, clean face-off wins. Absolutely. And that's two in a row for Kirshner. How about that? That's, there for another one. that's three on the, uh, he just won the face-off here to open the period. You 
get a 4 0 lead. Jake Chappie from Mark Kirshner. And just like that, it's 4 0 Dragons. And uh, boy, everybody you want to contribute is contributing, right? I would, that's, uh, couldn't say that any better. You got, uh, you, you're getting production out of the lines you need it from. You're getting uh, solid shifts from the rest of the gang. Um, this is good Dragons hockey, except for that play. And he walks in, but uh, number 13, or number 12 can't find the net. Well, that's uh, what we've noticed about the Highlanders is they, uh, they have a they have a high shooting prowess situation. They've been every opportunity they had, they shot the puck over the net. Yeah, no doubt. Here in the second period, it's kind of it's kind of interesting when you consider that. I think the stat is somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 percent of goals get scored from uh, a foot off the ice, and z and zero percent score that go over the net. <laughs> Absolutely. Mesta just to the speed. He's in. Mesta just walked by the whole Highlander team. Just too much Swedish and not enough finish. Here comes Janowski. What was that call? Is that icing? Uh, whatever that call was. Uh, oh, it's a penalty. Is it a penalty? On the no, team? it's it's a missed whistle by the by the uh, it's a missed whistle by the official, which is. Uh, if I didn't have this headset on, I'd yell at him because that's a neutral zone faceoff, Craig. Is it just a random whistle? Random whistle here in the second period. Uh, the Highlander played the puck. The Highlander played the puck at the center ice with a high stick. It went into the corner. Dragons played the puck and he blew it dead. So, but why do you penalize the team? That, I mean, if you make a I mistake, really think that puck should come off the neutral ice. If you make a mistake, you put the puck to face off at center ice and acknowledge your mistake. Right. Um, at that time, the Dragons uh, had a captain on the ice, didn't say a word to the official. I think that's something Coach Field might want to address there. Yeah, you want to at least get an explanation. Right? You're, you're, you have every right to ask for it. In a game that isn't four to nothing, two to one, one to nothing, you know, a one or two goal game, that could be an important face off, especially since the Dragons were still on the penalty kill. Absolutely. Well, it certainly is good to be on the plus side of one of these. Puck up ahead to Chappie. He's going to get another opportunity. He kicks it over. Nice centering pass to Stevenson. He just can't quite connect. Back to Kirshner. Loses it in his feet. Bach kicks it back into the corner. And here come the Dragons. Stevenson into the corner. The battle for it. 21 for Powell. Kicks it around to 16. And all the way around to the other side. Powell breaks out in the 24 through the neutral zone. And See, this is gets caught cherry picking on the wrong side of the blue line. You know, this is one of those situations, Craig. Four nothing, second period, six minutes left. This is uh, when Coach Fields got to get these these dragons to to go for to go for the juggler. They got to, you know, I've noticed a little lazy play going on the, in the forecheck where the dragons can win the race to the puck, and they've just chosen not to. This is a time you pile on if you get the opportunity. They look a little lackadaisical defensively as well as the uh, Highlanders are consistently getting behind them, which is what you would expect. They need some offense, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it comes uh, 27, kicks it ahead to, that's, uh, that's Blake, right? Yes, it is. Kicks it ahead is to uh, Janowski, who can't clear it. Tries it again, but uh, number 20 keeps it in for the Highlanders. And Blake gets thrown to the ice like a rag doll on that play there, Craig. Yeah. Reeb does a nice job of taking care of the front of the net on this play. Vinovsky turns it over and then gets dumped for his effort. And a penalty. Boy, what a bad decision by someone with a C on his jersey. My goodness. Wow. Does he call it interference here? And a 10. Five-minute charging penalty. That would be a five-minute major. Uh, Dragons are on the power play, Craig, for five minutes. I got to tell you, I'm the, I am a very objective uh, announcer, Larry, and I'm going to prove it right now because that's a bad call. <laughs> I would agree with you. Because uh, he just, oh, it's, no, it wasn't a five-minute. He called a two-minute penalty. It's not charging in any definition. Uh, I was right. It is a five-minute penalty for charging, and I didn't see it. 
Uh, if that was the play here on the close boards, I didn't that see is, the play. That is not charging, and the Hall fans are not happy. And if they could listen to our broadcast, we side with them. I don't even think it was a penalty at all. Well, number 24, uh, Nick Pratt. Well, I can't believe the language we're hearing from his mother from the stands. My Lord. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's a bad call. Um, we, you might be able to defend an interference call there, but I think that's uh, a bit lame as well. He, well and it, him, he played the puck, he hit him, it's hockey. And a five-minute charge means it's intent to injure. I mean, that's to call a five-minute major charge is... That's not a call. You to see a charge called is a is, is a rarity. Let alone see a five-minute charge called. Well, that's not something you see. In a charge, I mean, isn't it uh, two strides? No, it's uh, it's two full strides. I, he didn't have that. I, I, that was just a bad call. But the Dragons will be happy to take advantage and they score their first goal on this power play. Connor Masca fires it through the middle. A 5 nothing lead for the Dragons, and they're going to have plenty of opportunity to pile on at this point. Yep, they, they've only exhausted. I think that uh, our penalty keeper here is going to need to uh, fix the clock, and with the new clock, it shouldn't be a problem, but I haven't been operating that one. So yeah, I it would. Says, it says a minute eight, there should be 4 away left. I would agree with you. I don't know what. Uh, no. It's not that hard to figure out this clock operator, but here we are up in the stands. We're. Uh, peanut gallery, so to speak. Uh, pardon? All right. <laughs> I got to figure it out. It's 408 left on the, on the five merger. And we did. Five nothing messed it with the goal. And we did get the clock correction. 408 left on the penalty. Sidlowski with another assist. So it looks like Sid's got uh, four points tonight. Doubled his output for the season. Two, two goals, two assists tonight. Um, looks like we're arguing about who should be on the ice. There's about 34 Dragons on the ice right now. And four Howell Highlanders. They're going to sort it out. And I'm pretty confident there will be five Dragons when they're done. Five-minute penalty. If the clock is correct, I think that's what the Dragon coaches are uh, arguing about, but but there should be 408 on the clock in a major. Yeah, uh, I think it's correct. Um, it was 108, right, when he had put two minutes originally. So right, so. Well, hey, video classes are now enrolling. Uh, reserve your seat today. Learn the basics of studio and field production on ONTV's staff of video professionals with ONTV staff of video professionals. We offer hands-on instruction in a fun atmosphere. Orion residents pay only $10. Call ONTV to find out more. 248-693-3377. Well, Back to live action here, Larry. Well, as you said, Craig, you asked me that question is, when do you let, start letting other guys play on the power play? And I guess that's why I'm not a Division One high school hockey coach. Because you got the fourth line out there on the penalty, on the power play there. Uh, with uh, Nylon centering that line on the power play with the Dragons up five to nothing. I guess Coach Field knows more than I do, which is probably right. Well, he gave him about 22 seconds. <laughs> and I, I think, you know, uh, maybe they thought the penalty was going to end and they put that line out. Yeah. And the referees wouldn't let him they change. Let him change yeah. Exactly right. Yeah, I think that's what they were upset about, is that they thought it was a two-minute because that's what was put on the board. Fine, fine save by the Howell goaltender. And DePaul had a couple whacks at it, uh, right where I expected it to be, right there in the kitchen. Right, but I think I think we had a goaltender change after the first period um, from Ward Brown to number one, who is right. not on my sheet. He's a bit much bigger goaltender for sure. Uh, that would be Nate George, number one. Um, he's a bigger guy. He came in at the beginning of the second period. And the Highlanders have three goalies on the bench. They may go through all three of them in this game, Craig. Absolutely. It's been a while since I've seen three goalies. 
Bronx cheer as the clearing puck hits, hits the referee. Bronx cheer from the Howell bench and fans. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I just, I would not be happy with that call. I'm, that was, I'm not happy with that call. If it was, if it was reversed, I would, uh, I would not be a happy guy. But as you know, Craig, I don't question the officials. So regardless of who the penalty was on, I probably wouldn't have said a thing. That's tough, though, dude. <laughs> I mean, a five-minute major is such a severe penalty. Lock with a shot. Rebound, and they score. Looked like uh, 27 almost jammed that thing home, but I think it was um, the first rebound there by uh, number 19, Stevenson. So I think he's got his second goal of the night. I think so. So we got two guys with two goals. We got a couple guys with a couple assists. We got uh, we got points all over the board here tonight. The the scoreboard shows five, but is that not seven? It's six. 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 Okay. And unfortunately for the Howell Highlanders, with that questionable call by the officials, the Dragons are still on the power play for two minutes and 45 seconds. Absolutely. And Jack Barker uh, eats up the shot and the rebound as um, Howell manages a slow motion shorthanded opportunity. Bridger Stevenson with the goal, second of the night for Bridger. And assist goes to Matt Blake, number 27. Ben Bach, the defenseman, uh, number six. You know what's ironic about this period? Uh, I don't know, but ironic about this period is it started off with the ice tilted a little bit in favor of the Howell Highlanders. They they jumped out to, they had a quick nine shots in this period, Craig. Make that 10. And quite honestly, they're out, I, I have them out shooting the Dragon so far in period number two. Wow. But Still unfortunately, unfortunately, but unfortunately for them, three of the three of the ten shots or nine shots have been in the, uh, hit the back of the net. Yeah. Did you enjoy a little David Lee Roth as uh, Buck comes out to center ice for the Dragons? Nice little move there by uh, Mr. Kirshner as he tries to set up in the corner, kicks it back for the fall, gets back to the point now. Sidlowski back to Mesta. Over to number seven, Grieb, and a nice shot just wide. He missed it about maybe a foot on the short side. A good wrist shot. Nice little rebound here. Opportunity back to the point. Grieb holds it in. Got a big battle going on in front of the net with Defaw and their big defenseman, number 20. <laughs> it's kind of fun to watch. <laughs> Absolutely. A little bit of mucking and grinding down there. And the puck comes through. Nice save by the goaltender. A little rebound. They said Lowski can't cash it in for the, uh, the Hattie. 21 bothering the Dragons defenseman. Is that, uh, looks like Mesta, right? 22 is messed at number 22. You got it. Coming out of the corner with it is Sidlowski with some speed. What might he do here? Goes wide around the defense. He's going to circle around the net looking for options. He's going to kick it over to the point. Ranowski back to Sidlowski. Sidlowski skates around a, a loose stick. It looks like another Highlander is going to go to the sin bin. Defaw kicks it out to, to the point. Ben Barker to the bench, Craig, for the extra attacker. Defaw still with the puck, kicks it over. Shot from the point. Loose behind the net. Sidlowski back to Gronowski. And there it is as uh, Howell touches up. They have 35 seconds of five on three. Just to add insult to injury, Larry. Yeah, I hope. I wonder if Coach Field's going to call a timeout here, Craig, to get his number one power play unit a rest for the 35 second five on three. I don't think so. And Wait. Interference call on number 16. Oh, look at this. Nick Stanko. Mm. An interference call to keep his teammate number 24, Nick Pratt. A pair of Nicks in the box. And here goes uh, Mr. Sidlowski in the corner looking for that hat trick. 
Try to put the Dragons up 7 and up and see if they can end this thing early tonight. Nice setup to Bach. Good, good quick shot from the point. So they compress the zone. Here comes Mesta with a shot. He scores! Picks a corner. That's a 7 and nothing lead. And the clock's still running. Yeah. But uh, the second period. Ooh. Now, this is an interesting situation because you got a five minute major. So the second penalty, the minor, actually expires. Correct. The longer penalty expires, the eight seconds left on the major is still in place. Which is, which is ironic because when you have minor, well, two minors, the shorter one would have ended. So well, and as you see, they've cleared the wrong one because yes, the clock the, would right. assume that. But he cannot come out. Until his time expires. Until his time expires, to the best of my knowledge, because it's a major. It's eight seconds left on that pot. So he's out at about 26 seconds. Now he's going to be out, but the major doesn't expire until, to the best of my knowledge, a major doesn't expire in, in five minutes. Now he's out. And they're back at even strength. There's number eight. Well, you had to you had to see that coming. <laughs> yeah, there was a. Oh, there we go. That's a little late hit there. Uh, that's an inadvertent nothing. I wouldn't worry about that one. But the Dragons are going to get a trip. That would be Mr. Depry 14, correct, Craig? Yeah. But number eight split the defenseman and uh, went down. So certainly had to call that. Well, you do, and you know what? It's six nothing Dragons. And your hope here is, you know, instead of give up a good scoring opportunity, uh, let your penalty kill get some work here and try to preserve that sh shutout for a period in 19 seconds for the goalie, Ben Barker. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, isn't it 7 up? Six, seven? I, it is 7, Craig. Yeah, they haven't put it up yet. 18 seconds left here in the period. And how, uh, oh, goodness. Yeah. Well, they didn't like that hit. That was a good hit, Craig. I thought it was a good clean hit as well. And he's taking both right here. He's taking the captain, 12, and he's taking number 27 for the Dragons. They're both going to get uh, inadvertent roughing penalties. And this is a this is a good call by the official. What I'm, what I'm trying to understand is the parents were really irate about that hit, and I think they were mistaken in thinking that it was a hit from behind or a boarding when it just in fact was just a check yep and because <laughs> and because and because he was a few feet off the boards it appeared worse than it actually right, was absolutely well here we go that is the end of the second period and i believe we have a seven and nothing dragons lead uh one more and it ends it uh michigan uh, high school Hockey rules, eight goal mercy rule after two periods. So, uh, not much to say about that period other than pure domination there, Larry. Even though, as you said, the shots were pretty even. Yeah, they were pretty even, and it's I had ten to, ten for the Howell Highlanders, which really were were in the first six minutes of the second period, twelve by the Dragons, and for the Dragons, four of those twelve hit the back of the net. Did they score two or three on that five-minute major? They scored two on the five-minute major. The clock is wrong because we have two goals by Stevenson, two by Mesta, two by Sidlowski, and, and the goal by Chappie. Chappie. So that is seven, seven. Um, in my Lake Orion math. There you go. I like the way you think. And the, in the uh, third period, will start with a uh, power play for Howell. And there goes number seven, just got put on the board. A minute, we're going to start the third period uh, with the Dragons on the penalty kill for about a minute 40 uh, as they try to close this one out. But before we do that, as the Zamboni circles the ice, uh, the rather large Olympic ice here at Detroit Sporting uh, Center, um, Detroit Skating Center, excuse me. Um, be sure to... Be sure to watch replays of your favorite games right here on ON TV. Tune in Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the most current games in our lineup. Games are also replayed throughout the week. So check out our program guide on our web page at orientontv.org. For more replay times that best fit your viewing schedule, also visit our YouTube link for games on demand.
www.orientontv.org. Hello, I'm Joanne Van Tassel, here on behalf of the Lake Orion Lions Club, to let you know that again this year, the Lions Club will be doing Christmas baskets of food and gifts for families in need here in the Orion area. This year, there are donation boxes at a number of locations, and those locations are shown on your screen. We'd appreciate whatever help you could provide in assisting the Lake Orion Lions Club in providing much needed food for needy folks here in our community. Well, here we are uh, back at DSC. There you go, we got it, DSC, Craig. Skating Club, DSC. <laughs> and, uh, well, we're a little bit shocked. I mean, I, I don't know who's more shocked, the Highlanders or me. I really did not expect this kind of a shellacking to this point by the Dragons. 7-0 uh, lead going into the third period as the Dragons start shorthanded for a minute 40. And if uh, the Highlanders don't get something going on this power play, this game could end pretty quickly, Larry. Yeah, it sure could, Craig. Um, it could be an early night for the broadcast team if uh, the Dragons notch number eight. And here we go, the third goalie tonight. The third bear. <laughs> the three bears, man. The big bear. It's the third goalie of the night for the Highlanders, number 30. Do I even have this fine, upstanding gentleman on my roster? They literally get bigger each goalie they put in. And, and this would be controlled by the Hall Highlanders. This might be a French goalie, Nick Carnavale. Carnavale. Could be French, could be, could be Italian. Italian, or it could be Carnavale. You know those borders kind of come together, it gets a little blurred after a while. He is a large fella in height there, Craig. 24 with the puck is uh, how patiently sets up with the puck on the power play. It's an interesting setup. They've got three guys along the wall and then two guys just kind of floating out in space. Shot from the point gets blocked by Kirshner. Down into the corner, number eight. Bach bothering him, lets him go harmlessly behind the net. Yeah, it looks like the uh, ice might be a little sticky right now, Larry. Yeah, they came out a little bit early tonight in the beginning of the third. I have to believe both teams want to get this thing over with. <laughs> yeah, you'd think. I think uh, Howell's going to be looking for a ride home. I think their bus is out there, and they can't wait to get on it. Boy, number eight was calling for it on the back door, man. He <laughs> could not get a pass. 37 seconds left on a power play shot from the point. Just goes wide. I think Mr. Barker would have had that either way. 24 now takes a quick wrist shot and steered aside by Jack Barker. Going back in behind the net, number eight, setting up shop. I don't know how many guys have a C on their jersey. It looks like a lot of them. We got a save there, I think. And the Dragons clear it. 13 seconds left, and that should just do it. Ought to do it for the power play as 19 tries to regroup, tries to stretch pass down through the middle. 17, four seconds left in the power play, and here comes Mr. Depry out of the box. Five on five hockey as Depry goes to the bench. Dragons clear, they almost got uh, too many men there as it took uh, number 14 a little while to get off the ice. Yeah, he did the uh, the last minute Lambo Detroit Skate Club leap there, Craig. What did that hit to get up in the box there? They, they really need to take a look at that netting and put a couple more zip ties on there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is not, that's not healthy for the laptop. Sidlowski in for the hat trick. Oh, and a fine Here's save. The by the Jolly Green Giant. Fine save by Carnavale. Number eight. Is that number eight? And another good scoring chance off a clean face-off win by Kirchner. Kyle Roberts, the defenseman, threw that puck in. I'm sorry I haven't called his name tonight. Number eight, it's been a while since I've seen a number eight out there. I think Dave Otto was... David Otto is the last number eight. And I don't think and I don't think this this might be his first right shift here. of the night, Craig. Yeah, it looks like it. Nice stretch pass ahead for Defaw. Gets hooked. 
he's going to battle through that. But I'm pretty there. sure we're not going to see much in the way of penalties against Howell unless it's a blatant call. Yeah. I'm not sure you want to stick your hand in that bee's head. Puck goes into the corner slowly. A little interference by the, the Howell player. Like you said, unless there's blood drawn or a broken bone, then he's getting called down. And rightfully so. 7 nothing game. I guess it's all about game management at this point. I'm not sure. Is that? Chappie, you're, uh, Chappie just got hauled down from behind at center ice, and he is hurt and limps to the bench. So what's the red pants hanging out of the shell? Is that kind of like how the kids wear their jeans these days? I don't know. I think that's the, uh, the movie, the, uh, the hockey player with the traveling red pants. <laughs> Parker kicks it ahead to uh, the pry down the ice. Kirshner throws it in deep. Looks like that's what the Dragons are going to kind of do. I'm sure they'll take the scoring chances when they get it. They're not going to take too many chances. They'll try to play structurally sound hockey. Yep, they blocked quite a few shots tonight too, Craig, which I like to see. They're not uh, bailing out and letting Howell come right into the middle of the rink and get clean scoring opportunities. Absolutely. Kirshner knocks the puck away as uh, number 20. I got to ask you, Craig. Oberheim. I haven't paid much attention, but I think there's more Howell players wearing the C than there are players without the C. Yeah, I, I thought I saw a lot of Cs there. Oh, here we go. A little interference call on uh, Mr. Gronowski to get him to an even 20 on the season. Yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> you know, there's one thing you can always be sure of, you know. There's always one player on every team that wants to be as familiar with one side of the rink as they do the other. <laughs> Looks like Chappie's no worse for wear and is out here on the penalty kill, Craig. I'm gonna go ahead and call this thing. I think Jake Chappie ends it here on a shorthanded goal. Well, I hope you're right, Craig. Because if that's the case, I can get home early and watch some reruns of the Jetsons. That's, uh, and we have another penalty coming up here on the Dragons. And it uh, looks like number 26 is going to the sin bin to join his his teammate, Mr. Gronowski. Will Rainey. And Will Rainey is shaking his head like, well, really, me? What was surprising to me is it looked like he was being tripped at the time. He was kind of falling down. Yeah, but it's going to take a lot for Howell to, a, excuse me, get a penalty here. The question is, can the Dragons do enough to uh, protect the five on three, protect that first shutout? Part, first part of it right there is uh, Ben Bach ices the puck. Howell tries to sneak a guy in behind the defense, but uh, Dragons aren't going to have any of that. Well, 11.50 to play, 7-0, your Lake Orion Dragons. Uh, Shorthand at three on five. They try to kill a penalty. Good good, uh, good work late in the game to, to try to uh, set aside the Highlanders on this part. Yep, we got the red pants guy, number 16, out on, on the point. It's a little distracting. It is distracting. You, you'd almost hope that they'd make him uh, wear a shell that fits over the pants. I just thought it was like that thing where they wear the jeans kind of low, you know, kind of a rap culture thing. Don't think that's exactly the case, <laughs> but we'll go with it. Quick shot, steered aside by Barker. Uh, Jack looks like he wants that uh, shutout. Yes, he's looking for the goose egg. His, uh, his save percentage and goals against is not great early in the season. Um, and it's not a save percentage I even want to mention on uh, on live taped television, Craig. So hopefully after tonight, it'll bang up a few points here. And and they finally get a goal, and there goes the shutout. That'll get one of the Dragons out of the box. The seven to one game now. It looks like we're gonna- Be here all night. Likely be here for the- uh, Duration. <laughs> so, 
But we do get paid. No, we don't. <laughs> I was going to say, we get paid for a whole game. But, no, we do this because we love it. Absolutely. Well, so much for my predictions. So it's a 7-1 game, 10.35 left in the third period. About 18 seconds left in the uh, Powell power play. Shot, Great man. save. Point turned aside. Another save, but he can't handle the rebound. Uh, and another shot over the net. Acorn at full strength. Oh, puck just jumped right over the net. It was nearly seven to two. You know, I just uh, watched the Dragons come on the penalty box there for the last, uh, at the end of the power play for the Howell and puck possession in, in the Dragon zone by the Howell Highlanders. And, and it's frustrating to me that the player goes right to the bench called there by the coach. That's one of the plays where you got to let him go out, get it to five on five, clear the zone, then make the change. Yeah. Because that makes you shorthanded doing it that way for another four, five, seven seconds. Yeah, I was surprised he didn't jump in the play. Um, he did hustle off, though, so I'll give him credit for that. <laughs> yeah, I'll give him a couple points for that, but we'll let uh, – I'm sure that one of us will let Coach Field know what our opinion is on that. <laughs> Not that it matters. Well, the Dragons are looking a little bit sloppy here. I'm sure Coach Field is uh, not going to be happy with that, but it'll give them a lot to talk about in their next practice. Yep. You know, Coach Field could take the opportunity here to call his timeout and uh, get his team back playing off the right page, not letting Howell carry the play like this. Ray clears it ahead to Sadlowski. Kyle Roberts. Number eight. <laughs> Little delayed reaction, but I had to look it up and uh, use my x-ray vision. Sidlowski with the puck. Nice back pack to the point. Agreed. Looked like he might have had an opportunity to shoot, but he thought better of it because he didn't think he had a lane there. So Yeah, nothing wrong with that decision. Play. It's the, uh, the attempted one-timer by Defaw that was a little bit uh, surprising to me. Covered by the goaltender, Barker, to the side of the net. 8-12 to play in the third period at 7-1 Lake Orion as we uh, try to finish business here uh, at DSC on a Thursday night. If you're a fan of sports talk and just plain zaniness, tune in to Between Tormina. Different kind of sports talk show. New episodes air live Mondays at 6 p.m. right here on Public Access Comcast Channel 10. AT&T Viewers Channel 99. Also check ONTV Program Guide at orionontv.org. Weather air times that best fit your viewing schedule. Yeah, I think we killed about a half minute of game time. Yeah, I think so. And that was an excellent read there, Craig. Thank you. I'm getting good after a few years. Yep. <laughs> I shudder to think what happens if uh, our producer Joe updates the reads and we got to learn something new. <laughs> and the large Howell goaltender covers the puck as the Dragons skate in. Harmlessly. Nate George, the goaltender for Howell in the third period. Well, you got the Chappy Kirchner Stevenson line coming out with Bach and. Uh, Blake on the back end. I think that's Matt Blake. Nope, Matt Blake's number eight. Oh, Will Rainey. Okay. Nice play ahead to Stevenson. Tries to kick it into the middle to Kirchner. Can't handle it. Rainey kicks it in to the uh, offensive zone, but it's picked off by Highlanders out to center ice. Well, I'll tell you, a lot of passes disrupted with the sticks tonight. I would I would agree with you. Seven minutes to play as Box sails one high of the crossbar. 
Oh my goodness. Oh, you're really. The soccer player fell down and he, the right arm went. What up. is this penalty for? He called a trip. Uh, that might have been. And you know me, I'm never one to criticize the officials, but a fine check by Jake Chappie, who put a shoulder into the guy and got a tripping call. But I'm not, I'm not even sure he touched him. <laughs> I think, you know, I never question the officiating in a in high school sports. Not even this time. However, uh, I think Jake Chappie may have a little bit of beef here. That, that was that was a tough one to watch. Big hit by Grono. As the puck kicks behind the net, kicked ahead, and the Dragons try to clear. And here comes as uh, Sidlowski was able to clear that puck. Sidlowski and Chase, Highlander circle, back to 19 at the point. Can't handle it. Back to number eight. Quick shot. He scores. Well, what Mr. Barker was anticipating a pass. He anticipated a pass. I think he was a little out of position. Um, he really didn't come out to cut the angle on a puck that came from way outside the top of the circle. And he got beat stick side low for the second Howell Highlander goal. Tucked it between the pipe and the foot. And I'll tell you, as a coach, you know, if you, you don't usually get a whole lot out of blog games. So you kind of, when you get them, it's like get them over with and get out of here. But if, if you're going to get something out of it, you can at least get a, a, a teaching moment about how to finish games. Yep, exactly right. A little sloppy, a little, little slow, a little hesitant. Quick shot by uh, Mesta. Yep, Mesta. And the goaltender, uh, number 30, handles it well. But like you said, a teaching moment. And I think that's when you got to go in the locker room and tell your players, hey, we won the first period, we won the second period, now we need to win the third period. And uh, they're not doing that tonight, Craig. They're being outshot seven to two and outscored two to nothing here in the third. Yep, absolutely. Turning the tides here in the third period. And here they come, number 12 with some speed, surrounded by dragons as uh, Box steps into, uh, into him to break up the play. Out through the middle, the ball with the, the tie with the puck. Looks like uh, the captain's going to get some time in the box. Looks like uh, no harm, no foul. A couple guys going to the box to cool off. Budlowski and uh, number 21 for Howell. Yep, I think you got a little frustration by the Howell player and a little uh, frustration by the way the, the captain Sidlowski's team's playing here in the third. And uh, he's going to he's gonna let his voice be heard. Somebody called time. Oh, I thought it was a timeout. Going with the Blake. Um, sorry, Nylon and uh, number 20. Say again. Number 21's Brendan Adams. He's our player to watch as we've watched him go in the penalty box here a couple times tonight. Gotcha. Yeah, he hasn't done a whole lot offensively. No, absolutely not. Puck goes in off a double deflection. Here we are in a 7-3 hockey game. Three goals in a row in the last four minutes, and uh, Coach Field cannot be happy. Really sloppy hockey here in the third period. Game. Yeah, they're, I, you know, hey, these guys are going to learn a lesson. Um, maybe the hard way, but 5-11 to, to play. Now it's a four-goal lead. Started the period with a seven-goal lead. And the Dragons are just figuring out, a, trying to figure out a way to finish this hockey game. Well, they're playing out the string here at the end, and the, you know, when you get it to a three-goal hockey game, that's a hockey game again, Craig. Absolutely. Yeah, it's anybody's game at that point. Oh. 
the intensity level really dropped off. A couple penalties that, uh, you know, like like you said, you're not going to get the benefit of the whistle when you're up seven nothing. So, and that's exactly gotta, what's you gotta, happened. Yeah, you got to be ready to, to take care of business when those uh, soft penalties get called, and uh, the Dragons weren't able to do that. Chaffee tries to sneak one in on the short side. And icing on Howell Highlanders here. Icing with 427 left in the third period. It's a 7-3 Dragons lead as uh, not only has the uh, shutout been disrupted, but now the uh, goals against the average is being affected as well. Yeah, this is a save percentage. <laughs> and, you know, I'd like to say that the uh, Howell goalie here in the third period, the third choice at goalie, the third player is standing on his head. Uh, but that's not the case. He's only faced three shots here in the third. That's quite amazing. What do you have for total shots on goal at this point, Larry? Oh, let me do a quick, uh, quick count here. Boy, they're getting a lot of impulse scoring opportunities here. 3.58 left and all kinds of pressure on the Orion uh, goaltender and Jack Barker's going to cover it up, hold on for a face off and look at that, they're going to take him Dragon to the box. Here we go, I got uh, I got shots on goal, 24 for the Dragons and 23 for the Howell Islanders. The scoreboard would not reflect that uh, as, as it's 7-3, to three. but I got to tell you Craig, I am, I am very surprised at uh, the turn of events here in the third period as the Dragons continually chase each other into their own penalty box. Yeah, two and a 10 for uh, Mr. Deprive. I think you like to call that misconduct lippity-doo down there, Craig? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Well, you know what? Sometimes uh, being shorthanded can be a benefit in this situation just from an energy perspective. Hopefully that uh, becomes the case here. But another lost faceoff, not a good sign in the, in the defensive zone. Number eight, to the middle, 12 shoots, gets knocked down out front. The Dragons clear the length of the ice as uh, Mark Kirshner is able to ice it. 335 left in the third period, about a buck 35 left on the power play for Howell as they have to regroup in their own end. Jake Chappie and Chase putting on the heat, stepping up. Mr. Kirshner makes a nice play in the neutral zone as uh, Howell is able to regroup quickly at the blue line. Kicks it over to the defenseman. Quick shot, steered aside by Jack Barker. 19 tries to send it back to the Point, but it was a weak pass and the Dragons are able to clear as uh, Kirshner heads for the bench for some fresh legs. Connor Mesta along with uh, Andrew Defaw at the forward positions on this kill with uh, Gronowski and Greed on the back end. Defaw makes a nice play. And he oh, and he gets with interfere with, with and they don't make that call, which might have been the most blatant interference of the night here, Craig, but yeah. I don't criticize. The, the one thing that shocked me is I didn't see uh, Defaw skate through it. I'd like to see him fight through that. Yeah, That's just plow him down. Because yeah. then they, they have to call it. I mean, you don't want to the ref's not going to allow himself to be totally fine. Although I don't know about these guys. The one guy looks like he has a red nose. Well, and they're trying to learn the, I think the, the, uh, the referees are trying to learn the rules tonight, I think. We got 38 seconds left on the power play for Howell. 7-3 Lake Orion lead and 2.37 to play here in the hockey game. And a timeout here for the Howell Highlanders with 2.37 left. I think they're trying to set something up here on the power play, Craig, just to uh, work on something, maybe make it a little bit closer, go home with a little bit of positive spin on the game when they should have been going home with their tail between their legs in an eight nothing defeat about nine minutes ago. Well, he's certain, I mean, it's a tale of two cities, right? I mean, you think about it, after two periods, that's exactly how it looked like it was gonna play out. And now you, you, you figure Howell's got a lot to uh, build on and the Dragons have a lot to work on. I would say that's how you're gonna leave this game. The, the Howell's gonna leave this game saying, you know what? Coach is going to be happy. He's going to tell the kids he's proud of them. They didn't quit tonight. 
Didn't and quit. Coach Field going to the drawing board saying, why did my team quit in the third period? Yeah, you can't lay down. You gotta, you gotta finish. You finish strong. You finish with energy. You finish fast, focused, and physical. Three there, outs, you, baby. there you go. Hey, you know what? The, the most upset guy on the ice should be the goalie, Mr. Barker. He had a good shutout going, and he didn't get any help to maintain that shutout tonight. And a slashing call is. Uh, Ben Bach loses his stick. Even things up here. He's going to call that a slash. Oh, My goodness. Nice. These guys are great. <laughs> Clearly a slash called an interference penalty unless I, I'm... Just have to watch that one back. Sidlowski going for the hat trick. Just about had it right there. Gets hooked in front of the net. Four on four hockey. Two minutes left. And uh, Nesta just about stood a guy up. Just missed him. He tries to throw the hip check in. Greaves battling. They're happy to hold that puck in the corner. So not trying to kick it out too hard. That's going to be a... Lake Orion power play for a minute 30 of the last minute 50 of this hockey game. Let's see if they can turn up some energy and play a little bit in the offensive end. Seems like we played in, in our own end the whole third period. To the tune of about three shots on goal, I think, Craig, you said it all. Comes to Faw now with the puck. Takes a high hit. Shot on, oops, gets blocked by Red Pants. <laughs> 22, uh, Nesta kicks it over to Defaw. We got another penalty. Shot in the corner. We got another penalty and coming on. 21's gonna spend a little more time in the box. That's gotta be like six or eight minutes for him in this game. I didn't see the, I didn't see the hit, Craig. No, I guess if you can't score goals, you might as well take penalties. <coughs> that was a pretty cheap, uh, he might have speared him even. I mean, he literally, uh, hooked him and, and flipped him over with his stick. And that's 21. That's a three or four penalties tonight for their leading scorer, Brendan Adams. I don't have the score sheet with me, but... Uh, he can't hurt you in the box. No, but I, I, you know, three or four penalties in the same night on the same guy tells you a little something about uh, the player. And Defaw is down. I don't know if he hit his head on the ice. He went over backward hard. And, and I'm thinking he hit the back of his head on the ice. It looks like that's what they're... Uh, Maybe doing a, a concussion protocol here on him. Uh, Although it looks like they're taking the helmet off. But the uh, Lake Orient trainer on the ice. Um, we're going to take a short break here as um, we uh, get the situation handled. Uh, minute 15 left, 7 3 Lake Orient lead. Uh, we'll be right back here with the uh, rest of the hockey action on ON TV. Hello Lake Orion and Oakland County. This is Sammy Termina here talking a new show here called OA Now. We're going to talk about sports from football to basketball to volleyball to track and field to soccer, cross country, etc. here on OA Now on ON TV. Well, we got a minute 15 left and uh, as Andrew Defog gets helped off the ice uh, after a Rough uh, hooking penalty in the corner. Looked like he went over backward, maybe hit his head on the ice. But um, gotta, hopefully he uh, can clear the cobwebs here and uh, uh, heal up uh, quickly here as this uh, as we finish up this game. Yep. The, the Dragons are going to be able to finish up on a five on three uh, power play. Yep. Here, help to the ice, help to the uh, door, to the uh, locker room by a couple of his teammates here. And going to be a couple seconds before we get underway to finish up this hockey game, Craig. But like you said, it's a tale of two, tale of two tapes, tale of two cities. Howell played a, uh, you know, an uninspired game for two periods, and the Dragons let him become inspired in period number three. And uh, you know, it's uh, Coach Field's got some uh, coaching to do this week in practice. Um, 
Yeah, I think he got another game Saturday, but he's got some things to work on. Absolutely. And, yeah, as a matter of fact, they, uh, they take on uh, rival Stony Creek on Saturday at the Onyx. So it's uh, a little more time with gold helmets. <laughs> Five penalties. Wow, game misconduct. How about that? That won't help him put points up on the board. No, and I think five penalties gets him. Uh, That's a game misconduct. Yeah, yeah, that gets him out of the next. So that gets him out of his game. next game. And I knew he was. I knew he was piling up the minutes. Uh, I knew he had three going into that one, and that was two more. That's five. And two of the and two of the five penalties were majors, Craig. Right. Well, they gave him a major on that. Yeah, they did. What was the call? Was it roughing? Uh, it was uh, it was boarding. Boarding. Yeah, I guess I missed. I, I didn't see that properly because I thought he hooked him. No, I thought he said boarding. So. Gotcha. A nice tip off front. Twenty-seven. Blake with the puck skates it in. Looking for his options. Kicks it out to the point. Granowski with the puck. He's going to shoot. Puck's loose. It's a bad shot on a five on three, regardless of the amount of time in the game here, Craig. Don't like that shot five on three from the top of the circle. Well, he's certainly getting uh, some, some different guys out there for this five on three. And uh, the one thing I noticed is that not nearly as aggressive with uh, compressing that zone a little bit offensively. No, not at all. But I think these uh, four of these five lads are pretty happy to be out here on a five on three. Absolutely. 45 seconds left in the hockey game, and uh, it's heads up hockey at this point. Just don't want to walk into an elbow or something. And Box is going to sit behind the net and wait. 30 seconds. Moves it ahead. Moves I don't understand back. this at all. Do you, Craig? Janowski throws it in deep on net. Thing had a chance. 12 seconds, 10 seconds left. We're going to give him the benefit of the doubt because he'd almost scored. Dragons are going to close this one out. Five seconds left. Comes a shot. One more save for Mr. Barker. And a minute 30, minute 1.3 seconds left, excuse me, on the clock. One more whistle for good measure. We'll drop the puck and See if there are any shenanigans here. And that's going to do it. Oh, and there's a little cheap shot at the end by number 17. As he, as he hauls the guy down after the buzzer. Boy, that's that's a cheap play right there. But hey. There we go. And that's there, it. There, that's how that's how those uh, Rock'em Sock'em games end uh, whenever you get these two clubs together. Yep. The yeah. Victorian Dragons with a bit of a surprising, uh, comfortable 7-3 to three victory. Uh, didn't, they didn't close it out the way they wanted to, but uh, Larry, I think you got to be happy with the win. Uh, uh, first win of the season, 7-3 uh, to three over uh, the Howell, Howell uh, Highlanders. Yep, jumped out 7 nothing. Uh, Stayed on to win the game 7-3. The final shots on goal tonight were the Lake Korean Dragons 29 and the Howell Highlanders 26. Well, hey, uh, we got to think about uh, players of the game. Um, the three stars. Uh, who, do you, who do you have here, Larry? I got to figure uh, the captain, Sidlowski's got to be one of them. Yeah, Sidlowski's one of them. I'd say number 20, number nine, number uh, 19, Stevenson would be one of them. And I got to tell you, I think the goaltender, Ben Barker could also be one of them. He had a pretty solid game. Didn't get a lot of help in the third, but I think he did a real nice job. And he did shot, stop 23 of the 26 shots by the Highlanders. So there you go. We'll go with the third star of the game, Jack Barker, the second uh, star. Uh, Stevenson. 19, Stevenson. Uh, what's his first name? Young Stevenson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I had it here a minute ago. Uh, well, we won't worry about it. I'm going to worry about it. You're going to worry about it. Bridger. I knew it. Bridger, Bridger Stevenson. Stevenson. There you go. And then uh, the number one uh, star of the game, your uh, Dragons captain, uh, Ryan Sidlowski, called it at the beginning of the show, Larry, and you had it right. So there you go. 7-3 uh, to three hockey game. Uh, this is our first broadcast of the season and our last before the holidays. So 
Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, Larry, and and uh, to you and your family and, and all the Lake Orion uh, uh, viewers on ON TV. And to you as well, Craig, you and your family, everybody should have a, uh, wish you a happy, safe holiday, and I uh, hope everybody has a good time and stays healthy. All right, fantastic. So again, the final score, seven to three, Lake Orion. Uh, we will be back after the new year right here on ON TV.